First of all, I want to thank uh, those who have attended that uh, represent the, the great uh, Tibet people, Tibetan people, the nation that's been oppressed for so many years by the Chinese Communist Party. We welcome you, and we're so glad that we've come to this great day where this committee will pass and move out of this committee this Tibetan resolution uh, that will go to the House floor, pass, and I predict we'll pass the Senate and be signed into law. And um, thank you so much for being here. The world is no stranger to the CCP's aggression and excessive claims, and nobody knows that more than the Tibetan people. From ramming Philippine boats to killing Australian servicemen to claiming ownership over Taiwan, the CCP seeks to dominate the entire Indo-Pacific. The CCP has a long and violent record of oppression against the people of Tibet. In October of 1950, Chinese Communist troops annexed Tibet, killing tens of thousands of Tibetans and monks. The CCP's ongoing oppression of the people of Tibet ultimately forced the Dalai Lama to flee to India. This persecution has continued to this day. Just last week, the CCP released a white paper on its policies in Tibet. In this document, the party doubles down on its oppression and crackdown on the religious and economic freedom of Tibetan people. Some of the actions taken by the CCP include setting up boarding schools to, quote, re-educate Tibetan children clamping down on the use of Tibetan language, restricting movement of Tibetans, and even attempting to insert themselves into the secession of the Dalai Lama. Well, thank God the Dalai Lama said that the new Dalai Lama, who will be reborn, will not be born in China. This white paper demonstrates the need for this bill, and I'm proud to have co-introduced it with Representative McGovern. The Promoting a Resolution to the Tibetan-China Dispute Act helps Tibetans in two major ways. First, it pushes back against CCP propaganda about the history of Tibet. The United States has never accepted that, quote, Tibet was part of China since ancient times, unquote, as the CCP falsely claims. This legislation clarifies U.S. policy highlights the unique language, religion, and culture of the Tibetan people, and directs U.S. diplomacy to push back against CCP propaganda. Additionally, it ensures Tibetans have a say in their own future, not the CCP. This bill stresses the need for a dialogue between the CCP and the democratically elected leaders of Tibet. Any resolution must include the wishes and the voice of the Tibetan people. Tibetans are a democracy-loving people who wish to practice their own religion freely and have their own wishes and desires acknowledged, as we do in the United States of America. The freedoms that we enjoy, we want to be enjoyed by the people of Tibet. So I'm proud to have played a very small role and part in supporting this dream for the Tibetan people. I want to thank you for being here today. I hope you can be here when it passes on the House floor. I encourage you to relay my best wishes to the Dalai Lama, and I encourage all my colleagues to push back against the crackdown of religious and ethnic minorities like the Tibetan people and vote in favor of this bill. And I also want to thank my good friend again, Mr. Meeks, for working with me to get to this point where we are today. And with that, I recognize the ranking member, Mr. Meeks.